Hey everyone, so welcome back to part 2 of my JTAG tutorial. Um, in this segment I'm going to be explaining the basic soldering process and giving you a few hints and diagrams etc. Uh, but before we get started you're going to need a few things. So you may like to pause the tutorial to take notes every now and then. Um, so first off, uh, you're going to need 5 100 ohm resistors. You're also going to need 3 switching diodes, some solder, I recommend 0.8mm diameter, um, and of course you're going to need some wire to be soldered, either Kynar wire or some Cat5 cable sliced up will work, and you can use an LPT connector if you don't want to insert the cable directly into your LPT port. Um, here you can see a diagram which shows you exactly where you need to solder and uh, which components need to go where. The second diagram shows you two other points which also need to be soldered. These are very easy to get access to so you shouldn't have much trouble there. Alright then, so with all that out of the way we can finally get started on the soldering. Now, to get this done, there are a few things I want to bring up. Um, the first being how you're soldering. Uh, you don't want to actually solder the wire directly onto the top of these points, which you can see here. The object here is to actually place the wire on top of the solder point, which I'm going to demonstrate now, and heat the wire with your soldering iron until the wire itself becomes hot enough to melt the solder beneath it, at which point you can simply push it through the solder. Um, this will ensure that you've got a reasonably good connection, but if you wish, you can also uh, add a bit of extra solder on top of the wire um, to make sure it's making proper contact with the eyelid. So now I'm going to demonstrate to you exactly how this is accomplished. You first place the wire on top of the solder point, making sure it is well centered. You then take your soldering iron and gently place it against the side of the wire to heat it. Wait a few moments and then attempt to slide the wire into the point as you can see here. So once the solder has cooled and you're happy you've got a good connection we can continue and add the finishing touches to this wire before moving on to the next one. To do this we're simply going to heat the wire with the solder a bit and then feed some solder onto the wire. Bear in mind the wire itself now not the soldering iron should be the one receiving the solder. First off we're going to tin the wire slightly. Then we'll complete the connection between the wire itself and the top of that solder point. As you can see there. And now we have our first point completed. And now on to the second point. We'll follow the exact same procedure once again by placing the iron against the wire and gently pushing it down into our solder point. You can now continue the rest of the points using this same process. Another method, which I've also recorded for you, is by soldering the resistors directly onto the board. This can avoid a bit of mess, but it can be a little bit more of a handful if you've got many resistors at once on your board. Another downside to this method is if you need to remove your resistors to insert lower impedance resistors, it will cause a bit of trouble as you will have to resolder them to your wires. What we need to do next is to add that bridge between the two points I showed you in the diagram earlier and then install our two diodes. Once all this is completed, our final task will be to solder the resistors onto our wires and then solder those resistors onto an LPT connector. Or of course, you can just thread the resistors directly into your LPT port. They will both have the same end result. So here, as you can see, I've gone ahead and added in the bridge and the diodes myself using the same method I explained to you earlier. And both of those went without incident. They're both very easy to accomplish, although you will need two strands of wire, as you can see here, to hold the diodes in place, as the legs of the diodes themselves are not quite long enough to reach across the board. To attach the resistor leg and the wire, all you need to do is twist the wire around the resistor leg, place the iron below them to heat them up, and feed some solder onto the wire. Now all that is completed, we need to add 100 ohm resistors to the ends of the correct wires. Please pause this video and examine the diagrams I showed you in the beginning to find out which wires require resistors and which do not. Once you have done that, you can solder the resistors to the wires using the same method I outlined for soldering the wire extensions to the resistors on the motherboard. So now that we've got our resistors added to the wires, or in my case the resistors added to the motherboard which are added to the wires, I'm going to start inserting the individual wires into our LPT port. There's no particular method to this. You just need to ensure your wire is long enough to reach the point inside the port and then push it in. As you can see here, I've just put the first wire in. It's not difficult, you just align it with the port and make sure that you've got your pins right. If you need to, as I'm showing you now, you can write out a diagram or a note for yourself of which 
points correspond to which wires, and which wires correspond to which pins. Please see the diagram which I attached via the description. You can use it to map out which of your soldered wires needs to go to which numbered pin on the LPT port or LPT connector. Please note that you should not attempt to copy the pinout which I've used to connect my wires to my LPT port, as my wires are ordered differently on the motherboard side than yours will be. If you attempt to do this, you may cause damage to your motherboard. If rather than following my method here, you'd rather connect your wires directly to an LPT connector, please see some of the links to the very helpful tutorials I've left in my description. Thanks for watching. In part 3, I'm going to explain how to dump your NAND, then modify with XBR and reflash. So I'll see you then.